Ndiyo kawaita. Did you get that proverb? Let's <laughs> kabisa. Eh? Completely. Amani haiji ila kwa ncha ya upanga. Yes. Uh, what do you translate from that? Uh, I'll take it in my context, yeah. you know, the fight to liberate Machakos from incompetence will not come um, easy. Um, it will meet many obstacles and um, it must be fought for. You know, they say, Serikali haipewi kama peremende kwa soko inachukuliwa. Kwa hivyo sisi tumejipanga kuchukua serikali. Your party is Chama Chauza Lendo. Uh, not many people have interacted with this party before your candidacy. Now, my party is very interesting because yeah. it is the party of uh, Gitobu Monyara, it is the party of uh, Johnston Modama, it's the party of the late Senator Kabaka, it's the party of Wavinyandeti. It's a very famous party in Machakos. So it's a big fish in a small pond, so to speak. Um, it well, may not be known. Of your party. It may not be known nationally, but all those are previous party leaders oh, right. um, of Chama Chauza Lendo, which is one of the reasons that uh, drew me to it, mm. um, because we didn't want to start uh, our political campaigns with a party that had no um, grassroots recollection amongst voters. Mm. So we took the most controversial option, which has worked quite well. Mm. When you say quite well, what do you mean? Um, people know CCU. Um, the late Senator Kabaka, who was uh, my predecessor in the office, um, won the Senate seat completely against the run of play. And uh, he took a lot of time to establish the roots um, for the party. Um, my competitor, whom I'm running up against, was also at a point fielded as a gubernatorial candidate by the party mm. and so much so was the party's grassroots mobilization so effective mm. that um, the big brothers uh, came to ask her to come and stand uh, on that party instead uh, because they couldn't see they couldn't fathom the thought of being beaten by uh, a small party in in uh, in machakos but be that as it may it has a it has a rich history um, democratic uh, people who fought for a democratic space like mm. uh, uh, Gitobu Imanyara um, have been associated with the party and gave it legs in, in the early 2000s. Uh, some of the politi more political, uh, experienced politicians, perhaps one of the most experienced politicians in our region, um, Johnston Modama, was also a member of the party. Um, so it does have its pedigree, yes. But for me, I feel that parties uh, are important in terms of encapsulating the candidate, but the clothes do not make the man. Mm. And um, I would rather be defined by the clarity of thought that I have, the agenda that I have for the people of Machakos, mm. and not so much the party. Because when you go to the voters, they are very wary of party politics. Actually, in Machakos specifically, uh, the, the people of Machakos don't really want to hear about party politics in its traditional sense. Why is that? Because they feel that um, they've been under the thumb of a political party for the last two decades, close to 35 years actually, and they've seen no development. They have no tangible progress. And what we have is just... Uh, graduates of uh, a school of politics that believes in, um, uh, I don't know how you call it, is more of a club than, than, a, than, a, than a party designed to serve the needs of the people. It's really designed to serve the needs of individual leaders. Mm. And I really want to break that because I, I don't particularly like politics. Uh, and I need to say it uh, quite loudly. I don't like politics. I've never enjoyed politics. You don't like the politics we have in this country? Or no, I just generally don't like politics. Uh, I find it of nuisance value. Why? Uh, because you, politics and development are not the same thing. No, they're not. And, um, but you have to go through a political process in order to achieve a development imperative. So they're strange bedfellows. So they're strange bedfellows, uncomfortable bedfellows, mm. um, and you have to just live with it. Mm. Um, so I've, I've, I'm living with it, but I'm doing it within my conscience. I said, you know, win or lose this seat, I will not sell my soul 
um, to the altar of politics for politics sake. Okay. I will be clear on my agenda for the people. I will define my politics based on issues uh, and I will, I will not own the space of talking rubbish um, in the name of politics. I would leave that to my competitors who are quite adept at it. So the things that you've heard the people of Machako say to you so far, or the things that you have seen, obviously, being a son of the soil, right? You said at the beginning that you want to take it back from those who've messed it up. Yes. So what has been messed up? And then, seeing what has spoiled, what then would you want to fix? Or so, how would you bring about any kind of change? So the, there's so many things wrong with Machakos. Um, everything you see is a facade. So you have the place to be, which looks all very nice. You have all these nice flowers. Um, public but, toilets. Uh, no, actually the public toilets are locked in most markets. Mm. And they don't have water and they don't have a plan to clean them. Um, but the biggest telltale sign that things are broken in Machakos is, is, the, is the health system. Mm -hmm. Starting all the way from Gateway Mall to the farthest corner of Machakos County. Mm -hmm. And um, the health system has completely collapsed irretrievably. You do not have uh, medicine mm -hmm. in any of the hospitals. Uh, you have ambulances that were probably... Um, public service vehicles for ferrying goods like potatoes and maize that were converted into medical vehicles. Mm. You have a situation where um, our medics are not treated well. You imagine a county of 1.4 million people, 85 medics, 25 of whom are on study leave. You know, the patient to doctor ratio is, is so skewed that in any permutation, people will not get any form of decent health care. And the revenue that we've been collecting as a county, this current county government, has, you have, um, out of a budget of 12 billion, close to 80% is recurrent expenditure. Hmm. I mean, it's unbelievable. Can I, can it's I unbelievable. there, Waiter? The current governor of Machakos County sat there yes. some months ago. Uh, he sat here. Yeah, mm. there, mm. there mm. some months ago and told us that because people were complaining about several things or oh, infrastructure the roads are a mess etc and he said look we can't do everything with the money that we get but what we have made sure that we have done is to focus specifically on health yes, mm -hmm. focus yes. specifically on health because you know we can't get enough so let me make sure that the people are well and then they can now go on to do other things so what you're saying then, there seems to be then disparity between that which was said and that which you're saying today. Look, you know, um, Governor Mutua is not standing for re-election. Mm. Um, so I I'm, I'm just have to measure how much I really want to tell the people. But the one I you know that um, the health sector has collapsed completely. And it's so bad that if you go to Machakos Level 5 Hospital today, you will have to remove money from your own pocket to buy razor blades, to buy gloves, to buy syringes for injection. And if you really want the nurse to look after you, you better find a way of, um, you know, appreciating them. Uh, because their terms of service are, are terrible. Um, the county government has not invested in the, in the welfare of, of medical staff. Yeah. You know, and that's where this whole journey starts. Mm. If you don't look after your medics, and it doesn't matter whether you're talking about specialist doctors, starting from community health workers, you know the, by, the fight against COVID was led by community health workers, people who would go out and educate the public about wearing face masks, about washing hands, and things like that. We have 2,300 of them in, in Machakos that are now on the 10th month of not having been paid their stipends. You come into the hospital itself, clinical officers, um, lab technicians, doctors themselves, not getting adequate support in terms of um, allowances and stipends to, to work in areas that are, that are quite remote um, in, in the county. Then you look at the arrangement, the supply chain for, for drugs. 
to get into the hospitals. Mm. That has also collapsed. Then you look at the level five support that was given by the national government in terms of diagnostic equipment. So Machakos level five hospital has cutting edge MRI, cutting edge mammography, cutting edge CT scan, X-ray machines, you name it, the, the best of the best dialysis uh, machines. None of those are in use. Why? Because the operating costs are to be met by the county government. Yes. Consumables are to be met by the county government. And there seems to be a very a, a coalition of, of the willing, um, I, don't know, I don't know how to describe it, mm -hmm. where a, a patient will come in with an obvious broken limb, be given a prescription to go to the two private hospitals which are next door to get the x-ray. Mm. And yet the hospital has the equipment. Yes, not just the equipment, the best of breed, best of breed equipment. So where's the problem? Because, well, we can see this are, these are the things that are not working. Let's just focus on health. What are the reasons why these things are not working? Mm. Yet there's money that comes to the county, there's money that's collected by the county, and you've told us 80% of this is going into recurrent expenditure, which includes uh, purchasing the consumables and paying staff. Um, electing politicians is the first problem. Um, the second problem is delusions of grandeur. So governors get into office, um, ours in particular, mm. and um, you feel that you are a president. I don't know. I don't know where this impression comes in. You feel that you're so powerful that uh, you, you now do not have a responsibility or accountability to the people. You, you, you now, you are uh, almost a low unto yourself. Mm. And um, this is the tragedy of devolution in, in a lot of the counties because the governors don't see themselves as administrators. Administrative work requires you to be in the office in the morning planning things working with your team, making sure you have competent people at every point of inflection. So who is your hospital administrator? Who is your health CEC? Who is your health chief officer? Are they ready to do this work? And are you motivating them? Are you holding them accountable? Are there performance contracts in place? What is a picture of success? You know, we know what the picture of failure is because that's what we see everywhere. Mm. But what was the picture of success? Mm. Uh, and for me, the picture of success will be very simple. I'm not going to make big promises to the people of Machakos. I'll simply tell them, we will return medicine to the hospitals. We will restore the referral system. Mm. So that when you go to a dispensary, the dispensary will cure you for what the dispensary can handle. When you go to level three facility, we will make sure you can be handled up till level three. If you need a referral, to level four and level five, you follow. That way, we can plan our resources accordingly, mm. distribute our doctors and medics accordingly, understand where we need outreach programs because the county is quite vast. Mm. A lot of the community will never be able to make their way into hospitals. So having an effective community health volunteer system mm. is, is mission critical. Mm -hmm. Because but There's some things I don't get. I'm sorry to interject because I'm just, I'm hearing all these things and I'm wondering, okay, are you really saying that there was no plan and there was no management of all these things throughout the time? Was it a lack of leadership or was it um, lack of capacity to lead? It's a lack of capacity. It's a lack of capacity. Who's your running mate? With the best of intentions. My running mate is the sitting speaker of the County Assembly of Machakos. Okay. So what... Does the, what is the job of the county assembly in ensuring that the executive works? So the county assembly strings together the legislation, um, passes it, and hands it over to the executive to execute. Now, from an oversight point of view, it will be interesting for you to note that several CECs, including the deputy governor, have been impeached and are operating by virtue of court orders. So the, 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 the oversight function of the county assembly was exercised by MCS. Um, but they kept passing the budget. Uh, they, they, what do you do? You're, you're held by court orders. And by the way, the budget which is passed is not what is executed. Mm. The budget looks good. I'm sure you've seen the budget. The budgets look very good. And if you don't pass the budget, you, you create a fiscal crisis. Eh? 
Um, we've not reached that level of sophistication in our democracy where you can hold out passing the budget. Mm. Because if you don't pay uh, county staff um, and the money does not start to flow on recurrent uh, commitments, then things can deteriorate very quickly. Mm. The question is, are the recurrent commitments the right commitments? Um, are we sure that uh, we are getting value, bang for the buck, for everything that the county is paying for? Right. And um, how do we hold the executive accountable? Mm. You know? You did mention the vastness of this county. I mean, we're looking at, you know, really vast. If we're talking at uh, Gateway Mall here, and I asked this question yesterday, but I'm asking it to you as well. Yeah. Starting at Gateway Mall and then going all the way into Machakos, in, in past the junction. Yes. But then you're also looking right around the other side, almost embracing... Kiambu County as yes, you pass yes, Yata yes, and go yes, in that yes, direction. Yes. However, many have complained that those who get the most of the attention are those right in the middle. And that the infrastructure on other sides, I mean, because look, until, what is this place called? Un is until eating well into Machakos County is still considered part of the NEM, of the Nairobi mm -hmm. metropolitan, metropolitan area. Yes. But many have complained that the infrastructure has gone to the dogs. Maybe it was there the whole time. And so the question is, how can you have a dormitory area of Nairobi, right, look the way it does and no attention has been given to it? And then the hope is that anybody who is paying serious attention to infrastructure will pay attention to this. Okay, so you have um, two... Ex okay, you, you, Machakos is a very diverse county. Mm -hmm. You have a very urbanized part of Machakos. So where you have uh, Mavoko, uh, Athe River, mm. Machakos Town, um, fairly urban, mm. you know, on par with uh, Nairobi, Kiambu and others, save for the infrastructure. Um, and then you have extremely remote, uh, forgotten parts of the county. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens is politically, w what has been the trend is that people say, uh, Sio Kimao, Mulolongo, all the way until Green Park. Kelele Mingi, Kura Chachi. Mm. A lot of noise, not enough votes. Mm. So people don't pay enough attention to it. They go look for the votes elsewhere. Now, I see it slightly differently. Um, the breadbasket, the revenue opportunities for Machakos County are largely, probably over 70% lie in Atiriva Mavoko. Mm. Um, without changing rates, without increasing a single penny, without doing anything, simply collecting and facilitating people to do what they need to do. Mm. Um, housing developments. Um, you will recall that Siokimau was a Siokimau farm. Mm -hmm. It was a big farm. Minimum subdivision were five acres up until the mid-90s. Mm. Um, beyond that was Mbakasi Ranching. Beyond that was uh, Mangeli Farm. Beyond that, you are now into Portland and, and others. So, the, the, the housing boom came so fast that uh, the planning didn't catch up with it. Mavoko uh, County Council didn't keep up with the owners on the subdivision of, of roads mm -hmm. and the infrastructure, um, the building of infrastructure to support the housing. And you, you had five-acre properties that were initially having, uh, you know, three or four cows and two people now having... Uh, 1,000 units mm. with three people each mm. um, digging boreholes of 800 uh, meters down yes. and completely destabilizing the water table um, in, in the area. And that's the reality we have to live with. So my, my plan is very simple. I will squeeze every penny out of the national government that is due under the metropolitan uh, road infrastructure to make sure that the roads and the sewer system in Siokimau all the way until Athi River are done and completed within the next five years um, as of priority because we must get parity of treatment with Kiambu and Muranga. Um, and we must see the same level of development because Nairobi will only expand in the direction of Machakos, mm. um, both industrially and in terms of residential um, units. So it, it's not a, a good to have, it's a must have. Mm -hmm. Now, if we plan our towns correctly. If we plan uh, the, under the NAMSI program, we plan Mavoko municipality correctly. Mm. We plan um, Tala and Kangundo correctly. We plan Matu and Masi correctly. 
that should give us sufficient on-source revenue mm -hmm. to put facilities in the rest of the sub-counties that do not have revenue opportunities. They have just small farmers' markets that have very little revenue potential. In fact, if anything, we need to find a way of, of completely um, reducing what those uh, market women are paying uh, to operate their stores because they are not the primary source of revenue uh, for us. And, and for me, the cosmopolitan nature of, of Mavoko at the river requires a different type of politics. Um, everybody must feel accepted. If a border border guy has an accident in Ati River and he's taken to Machakos level five and they look at his name and the, the name starts with O. Mm. They say, why aren't you in your home county? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and this is the thing, the reality of Machakos is in Mavoko now, 50% of the population are, are, are non-campus. Mm. There are people from all over Kenya mm. and, and, and they have come to make their homes their investment, and their lives. And as a governor, I must make them enjoy their, their livelihoods, um, enjoy living there, enjoy playing there, enjoy investing. Um, and if they fall sick, be treated, and be treated as a first-class citizen in Machakos County. Well, now, Ita, you know, I've been listening to you, and you remind me of compelling evangelists who actually know their scripture and they'll carry you along with them and mm. you feel okay this promised land isn't a fairy tale exactly true mm. three questions water mm. has been a problem what do you plan to do two mm -hmm. you talk about revenue yes what is the potential revenue of that county and the reality of whatever budgetary concerns that the county has and whatever the leanings have been, is it a true reflection of what the money that is given to that county on a yearly basis, is it a true reflection of where the money actually goes to? Mm -hmm. Now, three, the question of squatters and the invasion of people's properties mm -hmm. within that county. Mm -hmm. What do you plan to do with this? These okay. are simple questions. Okay, let me, let me start at the top. Um, the water, Machakos is not as dire as uh, it appears. The situation is bad, but there are solutions which are very tangible. Um, in our manifesto, we have committed to tackling the issue of water in three buckets. Number one is bulk water infrastructure. Bulk water infrastructure will come from three sources. We will have a new pipeline from Masinga, to serve Masinga, Yata, and Mwala on bulk water infrastructure, which is a basically a new pipeline. Number two is we will make sure that the water from the northern collector, which is coming up until uh, Mavoko, um, Mulolongo, you've seen the huge Belgian project that is there, that water will now be distributed to cover Joska, Modwani, Katani, Siokimao, Mulolongo, down into Ati River, um, Mbakasi, Makadara, Sofia, uh, Kasoito, Kicheko, and others, um, and go all the way up until um, uh, Devki uh, and into Kenania. Then we'll have the third uh, bulk water infrastructure coming from the North Resh, which is the Kilimanjaro water, and that will serve Malili, Konza, Machakos town, um, and uh, up until Chumbi and uh, parts of uh, Stony Athi all the way until Green Park and make sure that that water is distributed and metered and collected by our water company, uh, Mawasco. But when is this possible? Um, this is all... This is this, future? No, this is not future. You have to have a plan. You know, if you don't have a plan, you plan to fail. Mm. Um, we have a plan to execute. It will take us easily up to three years to put up a new pipeline from Masinga. But that will provide a lasting solution to the water problems in the most hard-hit areas of, of, Ma of Machakos County. The Belgian project, the Northern Collector project, is complete. But the, the water company in, in Machakos and Mavoko have not completed the reticulation infrastructure. 
and the reticulation infrastructure must be done with a wider imperative. It must mm -hmm. be done with roadworks in mind. Mm -hmm. It must be done with sewer lines in mind, both of which are non-existent in Malolongo, Siokimao, mm -hmm. um, particularly on the residential side. Mm -hmm. The factories came together and built some form of sewer line that goes all the way until the treatment plant yeah. um, near, near the EPZ. So you find that... Um, that's one. Sorry, I told you the three buckets on mm -hmm. how we'll deal with water. The second is to take advantage of already existing gullies, uh, what, the, what we call water earth dams yes. and water dams and, and water, pans, water yes. pans, mm -hmm. and make sure that we build as many as possible and provide reticulation to the nearest points around those uh, dams. Because the big issue is there's no point in having a dam, no way to treat the water and no way to distribute the water to community points. So we are not going to promise to distribute it to people's homes because that's not realistic. Mm -hmm. We will first take it to village points and community locals and allow them to then uh, distribute the water from there. This goes together with boreholes. And not boreholes for, for, for boreholes' sake. You know, Governor Mutua has drilled 670 boreholes on paper. They claim uh, if that were true, there would be 17 boreholes per ward in the 40 wards. Um, which means the water problem would have been effectively been cured. But you know the business of boreholes is, is, um, is pata potea. You know, you might drill a borehole, find no water. Right. You might drill a borehole and find highly salinated uh, water or highly mineralized water. Or you might drill a borehole and find very low yield. If you are lucky and get a high yielding borehole, then uh, you can pump it out and distribute. But that's not happening right now. So we'll do a survey and make sure that any good performing boreholes, we are able to pump it and reticulate it again within the confines of the community. So if it has a yield of 10 cubic, you know how much that, how many people that can serve. There's a ratio um, in terms of uh, per capita, how many that can serve. We then go now to um, protection of catchment areas. So you'll be surprised Three of the highest, two of the highest yielding boreholes in Kenya are in Machakos. There is one in uh, Matungulu, a place called Ngangalia, mm. and there is another one in Mwala in a place called Biuni. Those two boreholes are probably upwards of 30, 40, probably even going to 100 cubic per litre. So they can supply entire sub-counties. Mm. The issue is putting correct reticulation and protecting the catchment areas. The primary catchment area for water in Machakos County is, uh, number one, is the Athi, what you call the Athi Aquifer. Mm. So Ngong, the Ngong supplies a lot of the underground water into Machakos. The second is the Mua, uh, the Mua Hills. Mm. The third is uh, Makaveti, the forests around Kadiani going all the way to the top. Now, protecting those catchment areas allows us to, to deal with the springs that are all at the bottom of those uh, hills. So, for example, in a place like um, Mumbuni and Mutituni, it's full of springs. But what did we do? We planted blue gums all around our springs. And what is the purpose of blue gum? Blue gum completely obliterates your underground water sources. Mm. So, it's really a question of converting uh, methodically uh, our community to understand that um, the resources are there and we have a way of getting it to them. To your second question, revenue. The pent can up we take a break there? Yes. And then we can come back and talk about revenue. Okay. This is the Situation Room. The only way to start your day. Zioka Waita, gubernatorial candidate for Machakos County. Zioka, you talked about the first um, one of the, the questions that CT had asked you water provision water reticulation what the plan was uh, before we actually now start interrogating it you were just about to start on revenue and revenue collection so the world bank um the latest world bank study on uh, devolved units puts the pent-up um, revenue the revenue potential for machakos county closer to about five billion shillings um per right year, now per year per year mm -hmm. on source revenue so generated within the county mm. excluding shareable revenue from the national government mm. so you, you, right now we are underperforming because we are collecting roughly about 1.6 1.7 mm. you know there are some factors that could be mitigating factors you know like covid and everything mm. but if you look at a trend line from from 2013 through to corona the underperformance has been consistent 
um, there are huge uh, revenue opportunities that have been left out. Um, and revenue opportunities that do not involve taxing anyone, just mm -hmm. simply collecting what is due to but be paid. You see, when I wait, the question that is always asked yeah. is, is it that that is the amount that is collected or is it the amount that you see it's in declared. your books? Because... Well, you can't discount uh, leakage, you know. You can't discount leakage. And, and primarily, that, that missing, that difference between the 5 billion and the 1.6 billion is, is leakage. Mm. Um, it's leakage. And it's leakage that, you know, uh, the Auditor General and other agencies should, should pay a keen interest in. I particularly want to focus governing forward. You know, I'm not a forensic auditor. <laughs> I, I don't want to waste time uh, uh, digging into the past. I want, to wa I want to focus primarily on closing revenue leakage uh, loopholes, making sure that we prioritize our expenditure. The, the staff of Machakos County government are very nervous, you know, and I want them to know that their new governor is going to make sure that they... They, 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 they get promoted. But what are you nervous about? They, they, because they've been handled like, um, you know, school children. I don't know how to explain it. They've been Th there's no scheme of service that makes sense. They don't have proper medical cover. Um, they don't have any form of job security. Meritocracy has been thrown out the window. Um, so they don't see growth opportunities. And the public service in the county is like any other career environment. People want to see progression. They want to know if I'm going to be a career public servant, I want to know how I'm going to progress. Nobody starts a job thinking that I'm going to die here as, a, as an inspector of markets. Mm. People want to come in, you want to be hired, and you want to grow. Mm. And I want to give the staff of Machakos County a proper plan on a scheme of service that allows them to become respectable public servants. So is because this a failure if I do you're this all for the things? benefit of the people. Is this a failure of the county public service board, the uh, SRC? Where are the? Because you're saying so many no, things no, are not no, working. No, 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 no. When it comes to staff Eric, Eric, and staff welfare, the fish rots from the head. The fish rots from the head. Mm. When 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 you elect somebody who does not have the capability for organizational discipline. That's what happens. You know, being a county governor is not about red carpets and toilets following you everywhere. Being a governor means you need to spend some time, look at the organizational architecture of the county, find a way to make sure that your employees are happy and that they understand the work they have been employed to do and they are paid to do it on time. And in fact, in my view, we don't have enough employees in the county. I keep hearing people talking about privatizing garbage collection. This garbage has never been collected. You can't talk about privatizing garbage, co garbage collection when no attempt has been made uh, to collect it in the first place. Mm. You, you know, it's, uh, what is happening is like a scramble for Europe, the scramble for Machakos. My competitors are busy dishing out promises to contractors and mm. businessmen, telling them how they'll win this contract here, they'll win this contract there. I love businessmen and I'm going to grow the businessmen of Machakos, but I have a responsibility first to make the county government function mm. properly because people have been paying rates. They want to know why Tala is so dirty. Mm. Why Machakos town is so dirty? Migwani, Kenya, Israel is a cesspit. You know, when you go to hospitals, contracts have been given for cleaning of hospitals and the contractors have not been paid. Now, it's okay to have a dirty street. Can you imagine a dirty hospital mm. with disposal of medical waste mm. and the dangers that surround that whole situation? Mm. Biohazard. Um, you know, we, 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 are, we are talking some serious things. But the long and short of it is this. Um, the revenue potential is 5 billion. The gap is one. We are currently collecting 1.6, 1.7 billion. We will do everything possible to get our revenue collection up. Mm. Um, and we'll put it out in our detailed manifesto on how we plan to do that. We will also try and look at rebalancing 
the expenditure. Mm. Because you cannot have 80, 20. 80 recurrent, 20 development can't work. It actually doesn't matter how much money you get from the national government if all of it is going to recurrent that is not visible. Mm. So if you are doing recurrent, ideally then your hospital should be working. Yeah, right. But they are not. So where is the recurrent going? Why do you talk about... Uh you know, 70% then of this county, you know, going this way towards uh, Afi River. Yes. Right? Whereby there's a lot of potential in terms of, you know, uh, commercial activity. It is also, again, a location whereby a lot of environmental issues have come up in the last one year. Whether we're talking about industry that's polluting the environment, whether we're talking about because of the case of lack of uh, infrastructure when it comes to sewage systems, again, environment. So there's unfortunately this unhealthy relationship between residents who want to make their home, again, from around the country, and the lack of certain things, plus those who really just don't have, who don't give a toss about the environment. That clash has been there forever. What do you think then is the right intervention for this problem? People have died, people have gone to court. There are court cases which are still, you know, ongoing. What would be solution? My first executive action will be to submit the NAMSIP plan um, to the county assembly for approval. The NAMSIP plan is a zoning and uh, township planning exercise that has been done in conjunction with the Ministry of Housing, uh, uh, Infrastructure, Urban Planning and uh, funded by the World Bank. Mm. Um, I will make sure we put that through the county assembly get it out intact and start to implement. What does it mean? It means that industries and residential areas can coexist. We are not the first country to have residences near uh, airports mm. and uh, industrial areas. What we have is an abdication of responsibility. So NEMA put the National Environmental Management Authority put the legal framework for enforcement, but a lot of the last mile enforcement must be done at the county level. Mm -hmm. So, for example, emission standards, effluent standards, the, 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 the big investors, when you give plan approval, you know you don't have a sewer line to give that, con that investor. So, from day one, they should be discharging into a biodigester system and a water treatment facility before they are allowed to discharge that water into the Athi River. Mm -hmm. Now, the Athi River is toxic. It's completely toxic. So you can imagine farming communities along the Athi River, all of which is Ukambani, because the Athi River cuts across the entire plain of mm -hmm. Ukambani. Mm -hmm. Um, all those people have been growing cabbages, skumawikis and stuff, which you are eating in your supermarkets mm -hmm. here. And um, I don't need to tell you how this story ends. Um, but it is a clear... Thwake Dam is being fed by this same yeah, river. Uh, uh, Thwake is, um, is, a, is a wonderful project, but it is a clear and present danger to us because in the absence of cleaning the Athi River, um, the Thwake River and all the tributaries that feed into the Thwake will have the biggest sewer in Kenya. Um, and passing treatment, it's one thing to treat raw sewage. It's another thing to treat chemical pollution, right. heavy metals, and other things which now are leading to the, the, you know, when did you hear in the rural areas, uh, everybody, second home, having cancer cases? Mm. You know, now we, are, we spend all our time raising money in Harambe's to send people for cancer screening mm. because of what's happening with the water. Now, I want the people of Machakos to elect me because I will ensure that this issue of cleaning at the river starts in Nairobi because there are portions of the Athi River, five tributaries which pass through the heart of Nairobi, uh, Kericho Akubwa, Kericho Ndogo, Bagadi River and others um, which start, you know, in Gong site. The others start in uh, a place called uh, Onditi Swamp, Ondiri Swamp. Ondiri and uh, Kikuyu, and all this water comes in to one side passes through Kangemi, Mishogwe, mm -hmm. another pass through Kawangware, another pass through Kibira, another passes through Mokuru. So what do you get at the end of it? Um, the rest passes through um, Ruai and, uh, and others um, where sewage is disposed right into the river. So take Mukuru. Mukuru is eight kilometers long from Mata Hospital to the airport. Mm -hmm. All that sewer goes into the Athi River. Mm. All of it. Good Lord. Okay. So, if we don't find a sustainable way to canalize the river, 
Because there are no simple solutions. Mm. You're not going to displace people in Kibera. You're not going to move people out of Mukuru. Mm. So you have to find a way to put this water into, into canal. a canal. And that is not a county project. That is a national government project mm. that underlies the existential nature of this problem. Because if the Athi River dies, a huge portion of Kenya dies. Because the Athi River feeds all the way into our, 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 our Machakos County, parts of Thika County, into Tana River. You know, the whole of the Savo ecosystem relies largely on the Athi River. Partly the, the, the Savo East. Mm. So what happens if we don't, we don't clean this? We're going to kill our country. So for me, I don't see it as something negotiable. I will make it agenda number one for the Council of Governors. I will make it agenda number one for the discussions we have at IBEC. And I'll make it agenda number one with the fifth president of Kenya, uh, Mushmiwa Raila Odinga. Talk to the people of Machakos, the eastern part of Machakos. Because there has been that conversation that you and your running mate come from the west of Machakos. And even the conversation that we've been having this morning, we've been talking a lot about the Athi River, Mavoko, on this side of Machakos. Mm -hmm. Whereas the people of uh, Matu mm -hmm. and Tala don't feel like they're mentioned at all. So the, the story is, is as follows. Number one is actually our entire development blueprint starts in Masinga. Mm -hmm. Because the people of Masinga drink water sold to them by Kitui County, believe it or not. Water comes out of Masinga Dam through Kitwasko, goes to Kitui, and is then conveyed back and sold to the people of Machakos by a county from another uh, another county. You know, it's a shame. I must I must remove this shame from the people of Masinga and Yata and Mwala. And that is why my plans. I have plans and I have talked to them uh, about building of their roads. I want them to be able to wake up in uh, Ekalakala, go until uh, Masinga, uh, Kiva, Kaiwa, all the way to Kwachumbo, which are roads that need to be done. I want them to be able to wake up and come from Ekalakala to Sofia. You know, those are the big roads that are needed. Mm. The people in Matu, from Ki Matu to Kidimani, Kidimani to Ikombe, Ikombe to Katangi, you know, and then uh, Ikombe to Matu. These are all the big roads that need to be done to bring some form of equality back. The people of Moala have told me they want a road from Kangundo, from a place called Chevalukit, coming through Tumbiuni, um, uh, coming to a place called Vulia, all the way to Kidangadini, and then crossing, going all the way to a place called uh, Kivauni, bordering with Makueni. I understand the needs of, the, of, of those three counties. We call them Weu, mm. Weuni. You know, they are the counties that have been most forgotten mm -hmm. by development. As you know, we have, nom we, have, we have undertaken to nominate a speaker from Masinga, the Honorable Alexander Nzambu uh, Kathinzi, and he's leading our campaigns in Masinga and Yata. And primarily, our intention is to show them that even though the government has been in the lowlands for 10 years, mm -hmm. because uh, our, our, our current governor, um, uh, Dr. Alfred Motua comes from Mwala. His deputy comes from uh, Yata. Mm. His previous deputy, Kiala, came from Masinga. So the government was exclusively on that side of the, of the county mm. and they got no development. So m our take is this. Florence and I didn't come together because of our geography. We came together because of our underlying uh, values mm. and we got together because of our, our agenda for development and our need to see progress done. We ask the people of Machakos that number one, we will make sure that they get adequate representation from Masinga, Yata and Mwala in our administration. But the acid test will be for them to see real development real development coming. And I've told the people of Yata that Matu level four will become a level five facility to serve them because the people in, in Yata go for treatment mm. in Kiambu and Moranga. Can you believe it? Masinga, the people in Modesia and Didini wake up in the morning to go to Moranga for medical, for medical treatment. treatment. And when they go to Moranga, they are asked questions about where, Musioka, what are you doing here? Mm. Why can't you go for treatment in your county? And if they are referred to Machakos level 5, the guy has to cross three counties. He crosses from Machakos into uh, Moranga, into Kiambu, Kiambu. Na past Nairobi, coming to, to Machakos, Machakos level 5. Mm. I, I, I must liberate people from this sort of punishment. This is torture. Mm. 
Zioka. for our people. Asante sana for joining us. <laughs> we need you back again so we can now go into these uh, issues that you've highlighted one by one. Asante for joining us. Thank you very much. Um, I am I'm, I'm very happy CT, Ndu <laughs> and uh, Eric for having us here. Um, uh, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to, 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 to sell my agenda and to appeal to the people of Machakos that look beyond party um, look for an administrator, look for somebody who's serious about development, somebody with a track record, and somebody who doesn't really need to go to court to prove that they were educated.